All right. Hello, everyone. Um, let's see if I can get the slides working perfectly. All right. So, um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about Astro, obviously, um, where we use JavaScript to produce less JavaScript, um, and that all in order to make better websites. So um, I'm Elian. I'm software engineer at Vrebridge. She mentioned it already. Um, I'm also based in Belgium. Um, and I'm also an ambassador for Astro. And today, I'm going to tell you about Astro. But first, to do so, I uh, want to take you to my personal journey in web development, um, how I ended up becoming an astronaut, as they say. So this is me um, in the world before COVID, um, fresh out of school in 2018, I think, um, keen to capture the world. I was young, carefree. Dreadlock free. Um, however, um, photography is nice, it's fun, um, but I wasn't actually passionate enough to make my job out of it. So it was like a good summer vacation that year, um, and I took some pictures. I went on a trip, took pictures, I wanted to display them online. Now, what do you need to put your photos online? Well, of course, a WordPress website. Um, so that's what I did. I set up a WordPress website, and right there and then, I fell in love with the web. And not just like browsing and installing WordPress extensions, because that's what WordPress development is. Boo, nay. <laughs> no, no. OK, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, I'm like building on and for the web. So that's what I started doing. Um, then I decided to go to college in 2019. I went to college for the first year. Um, and I was excited to learn about building websites and um, learn JavaScript and all of those magnificent frameworks you heard about and read about online. Um, but I actually didn't have a clue what those were. But it seemed very cool. It was all high-paying jobs, so it was very interesting to do so. Now, little did I know that I actually would be programming a whole year in just basic Java and HTML and CSS. Um, but you got to start somewhere, right? So for my specialization, for starting from my second year, I was doing cool stuff. I was learning Vue, I was learning React, and other cool technologies. And then in 2021, um, Vbridge, a company um, specializing in cloud architecture, cloud native development, um, came along and I started doing some front-end works for them. I started in Tailwind CSS, which, which was kind of a new technology at the time. Um, and eventually, I undertook an internship there. And I started working the back-end with PHP frameworks like Symfony and Laravel and the whole MVC strategy of doing things. Um, and I'm actually, I'm still working at Vbridge. She mentioned it already, but... Um, and I'm actually really blessed to, um, to work with such amazing people over at Feebridge. I really love my colleagues, and I'm actually I'm proud to call them my friends. Um, but still, one downside, I had to work in PHP. Now, all these backend technologies didn't really make sense to me. Um, I didn't like the whole page refreshes, the lots of routes and post routes, get routes and, and forms and, and filters. It was way too complicated, and way, it felt way outdated to me. So. Then I discovered the magic of JavaScript meta frameworks. Um, for instance, Next.js and Next.js. You could do so much with them. So the more you know, right? I instantly did what we probably have done so many times before, which is I rewrote my personal website and I added a blog. This is an actual screenshot from when I actually rebuilt my website around, I think it was like March 2021. Um, and it was awesome. But something had yet to click. Like, it felt that not every piece had fully fell into its proper place, like in terms of um, understanding and my application. Um, so yeah, didn't work completely. But then I looked around in the web, and I noticed something. It was a very small framework, like 0 0.16, I think. And it seemed to have solved all my problems. So instantly, I wanted to tell everyone about it. So I started talking to colleagues and to friends, but I actually got the same response from everyone, which was, oh boy, he has discovered another JavaScript framework. Here we go again. But then, here I was at React Brussels, um, talking about my love for Astro for the first time. And actually, um, React Brussels is an awesome conference over in Belgium, and the organizers are even here in the audience, um, just to see me, or that's at least what they told me. Um, and now, yeah, I'm here. I'm here at uh, this JavaScript conference, um, maybe the biggest of them all, uh, talking about the coolest framework of them all. Now, believe me, there is a point to all this, what I'm saying. The first one was to get rid of my stage fright and make myself comfortable on, on the stage. And now the second one is to make you understand how I came to care so much about Astro and its philosophy in the modern web space. See what I did there? Web space? Astro? No? 
Now, okay, let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> We're jokes. <laughs> Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. What is Astro? Well, it's a fantastic content-focused website builder built for the new age in web development. Now, let me explain. Astro isn't just a lightning-fast framework. It's not one of those blazingly fast frameworks. It's the only astronomically fast framework out there. <laughs> so there are many cool and powerful features of Astro. Um, I'll do my best to explain just some of them to you. Um, but just take my word for it that it's, cool. it's just totally dope. Now, for the start of this presentation, I'll be introducing you to two concepts, two of the most impressive, uh, impressive and important features to Astro, which is the concept of the island architecture. And the second one requires you to imagine, just for a brief second. So bear with me, close your eyes, and think of a world where we can be able to bring our own favorite framework to the table creating rich and wonderful UI experiences that your framework, UI framework can offer you. Imagine just for a second, just imagine that all developers could live life in peace and the framework wars are over. That would be awesome. So open up your eyes again, because what does island architecture mean and how is this implemented? Well, let's take the following template. It's just an architectural theoretical example. Um, but here we have multiple elements, each individually designed and developed to de deliver a unique UI experience. Now, this is what an island represents, a small customizable Lego block you can build upon. So now in Astro, there's many ways to make this interactive. For instance, and um, keep your heads up, um, I'm not saying this is the best idea, but it's theoretically possible. So don't do this, but it is possible. Um, you can bring your own framework, um, Solid, Svelte, React, Preact, Vue, Lit, Alpine.js, if you like, um, and more. Um, all of them are officially supported in Astro. Um, Astro allows you to like, mix and match them on the page, on the same page, actually, giving you, the developer, and your team complete diversity when you are developing what choices you do you make. Now, this also makes migrations easier. Um, between the different frameworks, um, you prevent locking into one single framework, um, making, UI, uh, making Astro totally UI agnostic. And it's the first of its kind, um, actually. So let's take a look at the official Astro integrations page. Um, Astro provides all of these frameworks out of the box, ready for you to try. Um, but not only frameworks, um, there are packages for performance, for SEO, um, CSS and UI, you can see, and such. Um, there are also lots of driven, um, community-driven packages out there, um, so you can look for those too. Now, let's take a short look at starting a project from the CLI. We get Houston. Houston is going to guide us. Um, we get some ask, uh, questions, very simple questions on how to set up your project. It's actually very easy. Now, I've got to be completely honest here. I had another video here, but like yesterday morning, Astro decided to ship a new version. Guess who was already finished building his slides? Yeah, not me, so I replaced it. Um, OK. So um, let's open up our new project in VS Code, or your other favorite IDE, whatever it is. Um, and something already feels quite familiar. As you can see, it's just HTML. Um, now, before we get further into components, let's first take a look at the directory structure, because we have to understand it. But actually, it's nothing too weird or different like from any other um, meta framework. It's just the source folder that's the most important. Um, there we can place and organize our components. Um, Astro has file-based routing. Uh, those go in the pages folder, obviously. And actually, last time I was at React Brussels, the people who are there know what I'm going to talk about. Um, I did a jump to show where the components were. And this time, I don't think I'll be big enough. Um, but there. Um, and in any case, I think I brought my laser pointer right there. So. Um, as you can see, you can use also the layouts folder um, to create shared layouts over multiple pages. Pretty normal stuff. You can get error pages and you get dynamic pages in between the brackets there. Actually, I should use my pointer in case you can see. There. Um, pretty normal stuff. So I don't know if you've noticed before, um, when I was in VS Code, there was a floating bot. Um, well, this is Houston. You've seen him already in the CLI. Um, he will guide you through your whole Astro experience, not just the CLI tools, um, but also in VS Code. 
He'll be happy when your code works. He'll be angry or crying when you make errors. So be on the lookout for him. He's really going to help you. OK, now let's take a look at adding an integration in Astro. So we can just use the Astro Add CLI tool for that. I'll be adding the React integration here just to make things easy. Um, and as you can see right about now, yep, we'll get some feedback um, at what uh, package it's going to install. And actually, it's just the React package, well, library, and the React Astro integration. And we also get feedback on how our config file is going to look like. But not only that, it will actually update it for us. So now we can see the totally updated integrations package, um, integrations React package, and the import itself. Um, so don't worry about writing your config files on your own. Astro completely takes care of that. Now, this is what I call the better CRA. Create React Astro. Way better. Now, if you aren't sure what package you want to add, you can always check it in the tool itself. If you just write Astro add, it will put out some packages for you to look at. It works amazing. And this is also a good look at what well, is really important in Astro, developer experience. Um, it's really great. Now, the cool stuff, some code. Let's create a basic counter component. We have all seen them before. We've already programmed like thousands of them probably. Um, let's just write a function, export the function, um, return some basic HTML. I'm going to put in an H1 as a counter component. Um, then we'll add just the number. I'll do that right here. And then we'll add the state in there, of course. Then we'll add two buttons, one to decrease the value, one to increase the value. Pretty normal stuff. Thanks, Copilot, for making that easy. Now the cool thing, uh, well, one of the cool things, is when I initialize the state here, see that it says react.uState? Well, we can actually just replace that react.uState by the import, which we've all probably done before. But as you can see, we're importing uState there, from React and not from the React Astro integration, which means that actually um, your components can be copy pasted over from a normal React application into Astro, um, which is really cool and can really like make you advance into building a new Astro website way, way faster. Also, the majority of React packages are also compatible with Astro. So for instance, uh, React Fiber, you can just use that with Astro or in combination with Astro. OK, so now we have a counter component, but we still have to add it to our page because we won't see it otherwise. So let me go here. We'll add it in the front matter, which is where the service side code go goes in Astro, which is in between the dashes. Um, let's import it. Let's place it on the page. And now when I open up the browser, there we go, surfing to localhost 3000, there is our counter. How cool is that? Now, Actually, you might have noticed that it's not working. The state isn't updating. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually because Astro ships no JavaScript by default. This is actually wanted behavior. So let's see what it does in the dev tools. If we open up our network tab here, and we can see when we reload the page, only the page is fetched and the favicon is fetched. So no JavaScript at all. How cool is that? Now, of course, it's a counter component. We want to make it interactive. So what about interactivity? Well, actually, that's the part where partial hydration comes in. But I hear you thinking already, what is partial hydration? What's this new term? Well, actually, this is the perfect analogy for it. Um, let's take this plant as an example. If we don't water or hydrate our plant enough, it will be boring, it will be sad, and it will feel simple. If we hydrate it too much, our plant will drown. Now, this is exactly the same for web applications. If we um, overhydrate it, we'll be drowned um, in either technical depth, uh, bundle size, or just general complexity. So let's take this to another theoretical example. Imagine we have this page in a normal JavaScript meta framework, like a Nux.js, for instance, or, or a Next.js. Um, all of those different components here will require JavaScript to render even though some of them might not even need reactivity or interactivity. For example, the whole footer. Um, it's just static info and links. Ideally, we want something more like this, where we can just select out our components we need to be interactive and ship JavaScript just to them. 
Well, Astro makes this possible. And how it does that is with the client directive. Um, using the client directive, we can choose which components um, should use JavaScript. But not only that, um, we also have flexibility to choose when and how our components should become interactive. So there are, are a couple of options for hydration. And let's take a little look at them and go over them. Let's start with client idle. Um, it's the first one. It will start hydrating the component as soon as the main browser thread is free. Really cool thing. I'll be demoing this one first, which is client load. Client load will just start hydrating as soon as the initial DOM content is loaded. So basically, you give the client load, it loads it first. So let's give our counter here, client load. There we go. Also, by the way, have you noticed like the suggestions? They work really well. Um, let's start a built-in preview. Now, the reason I'm doing a built-in preview and not just like showing the dev um, is because you want to see the actual result, what JavaScript is being shipped to our end user. Uh, and there you can see instantly when we reload the page, the JavaScript is being shipped. How cool is that? So now if we go back to our counter, it works. OK, then we have the client media directive. A really cool thing. It lets you basically start hydrating when the given media requirements are met. So ideal for mobile-only components, for example. And then I'll be giving a demo about um, this very powerful one. Um, it's the client visible one, which will only start hydrating your um, JavaScript, well, importing JavaScript, as soon as the component enters the viewport. It uses the me intersection media observer um, under the hood. Really cool stuff. So let's trade our client load by client visible. Um, now, to showcase this, of course, we have to scroll down. Um, so let me just add some lorem ipsum here. Let me copy and paste that for, let's say, 10 times. Got to do that. OK. So let's now restart our build. Another time, not the dev server, but like the actual preview build. Because um, otherwise, V ships some, um, ships some JavaScript by itself. OK. Now, we go to the browser. There's no JavaScript at all. But the moment we start scrolling down, and the top of our counter is there, you can see it's instantly being shipped and it's hydrated. So when we now go back to our counter, of course, it just works. How cool is that? Fully functional. Now, let's take another look at my previous example here. Now that we have a better understanding of client directives, we can, perform, we can actually optimize this performance to make it astronomically fast. Let's try together and add the correct ones. Um, let's start with the header. The header is always at the top, probably requires some um, interactive buttons, um, team switchers, you name it. Um, so it makes, it makes sense for us to ship JavaScript to that first. Um, what client directive do you think? Client load, exactly. Um, you're spot on. So um, simply because this is done as soon as the initial DOM content is loaded, um, it's an important part of site of the overall user experience. So we want that to be shipped first. Now, how about the sidebar on the left? Um, it's only logical to try and uh, defer this as much as possible. Um, and for that, we have the client idle directive, which I showed earlier. So um, actually, I have to push. Yep. Um, so lastly, we have this image carousel. Probably a heavy component, because it contains buttons, it contains um, images, and some stuff. So with Astro, we have the perfect directive for this sort, which is client visible. Like we've seen in our demo, the JS will only start importing as the component enters the viewport. So now we have an, um, an actual optimized application where those islands that require interactivity um, can be directed in such a way um, that it optimizes the end performance for your site on any client. So we're tired of seeing this. With Astro, we go to this. Um, the secret sauce that makes Astro so awesome for SEO is the composability. Um, all of those components will be pure HTML, and the content is fully indexable. Um, and without ever having to ship JavaScript, uh, well, a ton of JavaScript, it depends, of course, how many interactive components you need. Um, so that's what Astro gives you in production. Now, here's a very quick demo on how to obtain data. So let's add a new page. We call it jokes, because um, I'm going to fetch a joke. Um, let me add the front matter here, which is the three dashes. Let me add some basic HTML, very basic. Um, 
And just to make a point, let me import an API here, the jokes API. See that top-level await there? How cool is that? And because Astro has a simple, um, simple templating syntax of like HTML and JSX, it's so easy for us to get the data on the screen. Now, as we go to the page, we can see the joke is there. Now, if we refresh our page, so I'm opening the DevTools here, so you can see that I'm refreshing the page. There we go. Um, you'll see that the joke isn't changing. Now, why is the joke not changing? Well, when the application is built, it only fetches the API once. It fetches the API at build time, because we have put it like in static HTML, because we haven't used the client directive. If we wanted that to change on every reload, we'll just have to add it in a component and client directive load that component. All right, so let's have a look at um, using Markdown in Astro. We can add some simple text here, um, but since we're using the MDX integration, we can also use um, JavaScript here. Now, here we do have our counter component, not working. Well, why is that? Well, the same story. It's not hydrated. But how cool is it that we can import a React component onto Markdown? So if we now add a client directive here, and we go back to our page, then we'll, of course, there we go, see that it's fully functional because client directives are supported in MDX. How cool is that? Now, of course, that's not all that Astro offers. Um, Astro has an in easy integration with like style preprocessors. Um, it's as easy as install NPM SAS or Stylus, um, and that should work since Astro is, has post CSS support. Now, Astro also supports Deno as a runtime. Really cool thing. Um, there's also first-class prefetch package available. Um, it's on the, over on the Astro website. There is first-class um, support for images and optimizations. Um, Tailwind CSS is almost like a sec sec second, am I? second natural home um, here on Astro. And, of course, there is also, if you want to ship a ton of JavaScript and you want to offload it off the main thread, there is support for Party Town or just Cloudflare uh, web workers. Now, from AWS to everyone in between, um, to Vercel and everyone in between, um, Astro has a lot of deployment adapters, um, more than you can imagine even. And all of those also support SSR. So if you're not looking for a static site, well, a static site generated, service site generated, excuse me there, um, you can also use SSR. Now, if you prefer to run your own container, there is also like an adapter for Node. Um, and since uh, version Astro version 2, there is also the possibility to use hybrid rendering. Really cool feature there. And lastly, um, the new content collection API has an amazing way to work with Markdown and MDX. But it's a little too complicated to explain here fully. Um, so I invite you to get started on the docs. You can check the tutorial and other stuff over there, um, over on Astro's website and documentation. And there's also a link to um, the Astro Discord. It's a really welcoming and friendly place with more than enough people um, willing to support you on your Astro journey. It's really cool. Um, and I want to say, by, say another thanks for you to be here. Um, it's been an absolute privilege of you to be here and for me to speak for you. Um, this concludes my talk. But however, you should stay in your seats because um, you're in for a treat. The next speaker is Fred, who is actually the CEO of HTML and the co-founder of Astro. So really cool. Thanks, everyone.